So um, what, what is write amplification? Um, so this is when a host sends write data to a SSD or a device, um, it's the additional data that, that uh, needs to be written to the media. So um, we talk about something called a write amplification factor or a WAF. Um, so it's just the host, the data that was written from the host application, um, uh, or sorry, uh, the media data, I think this is reversed. I think it's the media data written divided by the data written from the host. Um, so for example, if the host writes a megabyte, um, the device has to write 2.5 megabytes, it's the 2.5 divided by the one, and you have a WAF of, of 2.5. 2 so um, in particular, the major source of this would be garbage collection. So that, that additional 1.5 megabytes of writes results from the drive, you know, reading one and a half megabytes of data that needs to be uh, rewritten somewhere else. Um, and, and it's undesirable, right? Uh, so this, um, these extra writes and reads can affect uh, performance and, and the quality of service that the application observes. Um, they cause wear out. Um, so, you know, your drive lifetime doesn't, doesn't, uh, it goes down relative to what you might get without, without the higher WAF. And there's additional power, right? Writes are, writes are power hungry on SSDs. And so, you know, multiplying the number of writes you do by a factor of two and a half has a big uh, power and thermal implications as well. So, um, so what does this all mean? So, um, you know, this is a very simple example, um, but if you have a random write workload uh, with 28% OP and a greedy uh, garbage collection algorithm, which just means you pick the block that has the fewest available or uh, 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 valid sectors and it's still to garbage collect, um, you can expect kind of a write amplification of two and a half. Um, if, you could, if you could reduce that write amplification from two and a half to one, one, one you know, by 50% or in half, sorry, um, there, there's some potential benefits, right? You could reduce the over-provisioning. So in other words, instead of wasting 28% on the drive OP, I could, I could significantly reduce that, get, this, uh, get extra bytes and um, deploy, you know, 18%, uh, save 18% CapEx on, on the SSD deployment. You could um, enable 2x the drive size with the same uh, write density from the application. So in other words, you can, you can hit a, you know, a higher performance. Um, but, but in this case, you use that to uh, deploy a larger drive, which comes with its own savings, right? A larger drive is more efficient at the same performance in terms of uh, power and, and uh, cost. Um, you could double the effective drive lifetime. Um, so if you were having to replace a drive early because of, of wear out, um, this um, can save CapEx that way. Or just enabling purely 2x the write rate that your application really had. So summary though is write amplification has a potential very significant impact to hyperscalers in terms of uh, the bottom line. So if we could get to uh, a WAF of 1.0 um, across the board, then you you could you know we'd be decreasing the uh, the uh, uh, over provisioning right, saving uh, yielding additional bytes per drive. Um, the random and sequential write workloads would look have similar performance profiles. You know today uh, a random workload has significantly lower throughput in general um, than than a uh, sequential workload. Um, there's, there isn't this preconditioning, right? You get the same performance from the first byte you write to the last byte you write to the drive. And um, the, the QoS of reads and writes would benefit, right? You don't have the, uh, the write interference that occurs um, with reads, or the reads are wouldn't be interfered with by the writes to the same extent. Um, and media wear would be reduced. So a little bit about the history of write amplification in NVMe, um, you know, in the beginning, in you know, the, in the not early '90s, um, the only tool that that this was that was there to deal with this was over provisioning, right? If you wanted to make the reduce write amplification, you just needed to put um, larger um, um, larger amounts of over provisioning into the drive. You know, 
around 2007, 2008, uh, trim operations were introduced, which this is, this is sort of an uh, indication from the host that some data is no longer valid. And that allowed um, the drive to sort of um, take advantage of that immediately, that extra space immediately, um, and, and reduce write amplification. Um, but what we're getting into here is a flexible data placement, which is coming soon, like I mentioned, we're working on standardizing it. So how did this come about? Um, so Google, at Google, we were, we were looking at right amplification. Um, we um, you know, the, believe the, the placement of data initially on the drive is critical to solving that problem. And we had a smart FTL proposal, which we talked about at OCP last fall. Um, in parallel, um, Meta has been working on right amplification and data placement on, on media is key. And they had a uh, direct uh, placement mode proposal. They were also talking about last fall at OCP. Exactly. We were both hunting in the same pool and came up yes. with the same answer. So, so we decided <laughs> that instead of uh, going through and trying to standardize two slightly different uh, proposals that sort of address the same underlying issue, we'd uh, get together and make everybody's life easier and come up with one, uh, one proposal there. And that, that is currently called the flexible data placement mode. Um, and so kind of a high level overview here. Um, basically the host provides write hints uh, for, uh, for all write operations. Um, the reads and other device behaviors don't change with this mode. Um, it's uh, you know targeted to data center SSDs and it's um, it's backwards compatible in the sense that it's sort of an incremental add-on to the, the base NVMe command interface. Um, so uh, Ross has this, this nice table on the right here. <laughs> I'll do an att I'll attempt to to describe it, but basically uh, you know. FTP, uh, it's, it's an optional feature in NVMe. You can enable, disable it. Um, it. It enables the host to understand where uh, internal media boundaries are. So um, there's this notion of, uh, well, reclaim units. I don't want to get too much in the terminology, but it's basically an abstraction that lets the host understand where garbage collection boundaries are in the device so that the host can optimize its placement to, to, um, to those boundaries. Um, there are no changes to read operations. They work exactly the same. Um, the, uh, you know, and, and so we can, um, knowing where the boundaries are, the drive uh, erases on those boundaries and the host is enabled to, um, to place its data efficiently um, with respect to those boundaries. Um, there's no restrictions based on LBA. So this hint uh, runs down as, a, as an IO directive separate from the LBA. So that's, I think, important in the, in the um, context of incremental and backwards compatibility. So you don't need to change you know, file system block allocations or any of these other pieces. You just need to have a layer that understands the, the goals in terms of what data should be placed together and um, can, can specify those hints in addition. Um, so it's, it's sort of incremental in that, in that regard as well. Um, it, it's optional whether or not um, you have a, a you, you run it in sort of a super block style mode with, with XOR and parity um, and focus on uh, differentiating um, maybe a smaller number of, of, of objects or a um, um, take the trade off of, of not having XOR and, and running the larger set of parallel um, uh, objects being written simultaneously. Um, multiple namespaces can be supported um, and, and I mentioned it's, it's designed to be backwards compatible. Chris, that was great. Uh, you know, this is all about taking the drives you have today and making them better. You know, it's backwards compatible. And so with that, uh, I'll walk you through uh, one example. There are many use cases, but here's just one that illustrates the value of this. So today there are many multi-user, uh, multi-workload, disaggregated storage types of applications. You know, the challenge is, you know, a bunch of different applications. They all talk to the same SSD. The workloads are mixed between all these applications and they come and go. And device thus is never really stable because the workloads are always changing to the device as opposed to this nice stable workload that goes forever. That just doesn't exist in a multi-tenant type of environment. 
And so uh, then in those cases, you over provision uh, until you get the right amp low enough. And then you call that good enough and you continue on with the process. So let me, uh, let me walk you through the solution here. Uh, so I have application A, B, and C. And uh, today without FTP, you have these super blocks. Let me define what I mean by a super block. By that, I mean you have a bunch of blocks striped, striped across the NAND channels. You may have XOR across that. You may not. This is how drives work today. You see how without FTP, all these applications, they stuff the data and the drive stuffs them into the super blocks. Then application A deallocates all this data. We say life is great. So then you see the yellow holes in these super blocks from the uh, deallocated data. We GC those blocks and we end up with a WAF of three. Now, if I compare this to the uh, FTP solution with FTP, application A goes in one super block, application B goes into another block, C into another. Once again, application A deallocates all its data. However, you see all of its data was in one super block. So that super block can now be erased and the GC impact is a WAF of one. So what does that mean? I just reduced the uh, dry wear 3x in this example. As, uh, you know, so with that, uh, FTP is working through the NVMe Express standardization process. And we're looking forward to a new world where uh, a WAF of one is a commonplace uh, thing compared to where things are today.